Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can't choose what hey, I Hey, everybody, welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Right as I started yelling, I realized everyone can hear us. Oh, the it's neighbors. It's so bad, the neighbors. The office. Don't knock. Nope. <laughs> don't tap on the glass. Yeah, well, I don't want to get piled on again. This thing will come down on me like a south tower. Pig pile. Yes. Dog pile. Uh, uh, the, by the guy was really shouting today. Really? He's yeah. back, huh? Chuck was here uh, early. I think Chuck must jerk off in here. He got here two hours early. I know I do. But I got in here. Yeah, but I'm saying when he's alone. Ah, <laughs> now, different. Chuck got in here early, and that guy was shouting up a storm. He's like Earl Weaver over there. Is he's it, fuck this, fuck you, fuck that. Is it still the wife? I'm going to kill you. I can't believe you fucked that black guy. Is it the whole st- the standard, or is it new stuff? I couldn't hear, really. I, cu- I mean, I could hear, but I wasn't listening because I was uh, cringing. just thinking about us. Yeah, yeah. He's doing old Carlin albums in there. Piss, fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> It's, he's just saying all the worst things. It reminds me of my old roommate. You remember my old roommate, Jay? The Samoan? The Sam- ah, yes. Samoan. Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> I, this is a giant brown man, I, I believe, is an Eskimo. Mark, he Mark, knew it. Mark stayed at my house 25 years ago. He's sleeping in the living room. I didn't warn him that I have a 58-year-old Indian roommate. Yes. And so all of a sudden, he comes in and Mark just... Roll, fell out of bed Ooh. like fucking, uh, you know, who fell out of bed? Anyone yeah, famous? Somebody must have fallen out of bed. I yeah. think uh, Rip Van Winkle at some point. He slept. Uh, Groucho maybe did a sure, thing. Sure, sure. But Somebody. yeah. Who's the most famous falling out of bed? There's got to be one. I think sex, they kick you and you roll out of the bed or sure, something. Sure, sure. Well, well, think of it. It was like Bugs Bunny. And then he shit. And he was like, what the hell? And then you just kept going. You got a Samoa. And it, it was full volume. I had to be like, shut up. Yeah, well, when you're hungover and still drunk, and you figure Samoan's not gonna hear, but it reminded me of my my summer camp childhood. A big big brown guy came in when I was sleeping in my underwear. I didn't know what to do, but yeah, cute guy, nice guy. I believed he worked at the airport. Sweet, sweet guy. But he so he worked at the airport, but he was in charge of a lot of numbskulls because I think the people he was the boss over ah. were all kind of minimum wage, whatever uh, work release programs, whatever that. Means like sure. it's something to do with jerking off. Ex cons. Sure. So he would scream at them on the phone. It was very similar to this, where you could hear ah. him. And one time I heard him say this. I'm sure I've told this on a podcast before, but it's the funniest thing I've ever heard anybody say ever. He said, "Listen to me very carefully. Do yourself a favor. Smash your head against the wall three times and throw yourself down a flight of stairs." Wow. <laughs> I mean, is that is that beautiful? That's, That's poetry. Beautiful. And that was to his daughter. <laughs> I mean, that, it's like Edgar Allan Poe. That is really something. Well, it's it's uh, nice. He works with all these knuckleheads all day, these idiots, and he comes home to a couple upstanding citizens <laughs> in their underwear, pissing blood on the couch and uh, jerking off. You, me, and Jason Cantor. But, I mean, smash your head against the wall three times. To preface, listen to me very carefully. Yes. Classically funny. Smash your head against the wall three times, count them, and then... Throw yourself down a flight wow. of stairs. And that's his boss. Imagine your boss saying that. I know. Can you imagine Chuck saying this to us? I love it. I love it. I mean, that guy would be put on a HR or PR or Puerto Rican. Like, you can't say that shit anymore. You get one little recording of that. Woo-hoo. That goes out in the <laughs> no. ether. It's over. No, forget it. By the way, don't you forget that we're Chuck's boss? It feels like the opposite, uh, doesn't it? Yeah, well, he sits in a chair. He's got glasses. He's uh, watching us. We're yes, children. Yes, he goes home and edits stuff. It, yeah, it does feel like we're your boss. We yeah. just want to make you happy. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I quit. Wait a minute. <laughs> you, Hold on. You suck. But yeah, Blow the, me. That's the moment. It's so weird that to be a, a boss. Like They look up to this guy. He's in a suit probably at work. Then he comes home, and it's just uh, it's like Rugrats and Jurassic Park in there. It's wild. <laughs> I know. And, and then he lived. I think I never talked. I assumed he hated us. I feel like such a dipshit. Looking back, it's such a regret because... I moved. Did you ever move into somebody else's place? Sure. That's a bad feeling. So Cantor yes. lived there, and, and Jay, and then um, I forget who else 
lived, oh, Paul Odo. Uh-huh. And so I moved in. When you ever had that situation, it feels like you you're are- You're the guest. Uh, you're a, uh, what's that? Outlier? Yeah, Outsider. That? Outsider. Misfit. What do you call it when you, a stowaway? A cancer, a cunt. Uh, you feel like uh, a, a visitor. Uh, uh, yes, yes, uh, not welcome. Uh, mm. Mm, a, a peasant, a slave. A pedophile, I, don't know. I think it was. That's the one. You feel like a pedophile because you're attracted to children nude, but you had come in there and I'd be tiptoeing around and I forget this is my home. Of course. And then he's older, he's got a straight job, he's not a comic, he's not an alcoholic, so I thought, he doesn't want to hear from me, so I would just keep my head down. Hey, Jay, sorry. I think it's considerate. And also, I'd be watching, you know, No Country for Old Men at four in the morning. I'm listening to fucking Highway 61 revisited at 7 a.m. Mm. So I assume Love every, Green Day. every time I come out, he, he's like, hey, you piece of shit. Of course. So I never spoke to him. Then we move out. All these young comics move in. They're all best buddies with them. He's really? on their podcast. He's what? hanging out. They have lunch. <laughs> what and a I cool feel like guy. an asshole. Wow, the podcast is called Listen Very Carefully. <laughs> but yeah, that is hilarious. He was always a sweet dude. I mean, he got it. He knew we were young. He knew we were drunks. He would come through with his uh, boxer shorts on and his brown Indian legs, and you'd go, oh, shit. But he never said anything. He never yelled. Did he ever even say, keep it down out there? Never once ever. Never once. I think he was just grateful to have a, a cheap place. Yes. I think he went through a lot of shit. Divorce. Divorce, uh. and I think... Other big serious stuff that feels like it's not my business to oh say. Oh boy! But uh, I think he'd been through a lot, so he was just happy to be over there. And I think he's, ironically, a Zen guy, except yes. with working with these numbskulls. Right, right. Well, it takes it takes a toll, and he's living in animal house as well. Yeah, it was bad. We were wild. It feels like a sitcom that you would pitch, and they would go, "This is too stupid. It's too unbelievable." All right, we got an old Indian guy. He works at the airport. He's divorced. He's in his underwear. He's yelling at people, and he lives with a bunch of comics in Queens in a four hundred square foot apartment. Yes, and the comics are alcoholic. And then the person that you're telling this to goes, "What if we make them gay women?" Asian and wheelchairs, and then they're like, okay, we can do that, I guess. Sold. And then we're like, well, we don't want to do that. And they're like, well, it's not going to be on TV. And we're like, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get a trans host. Uh, sell it. <laughs> but anyway, so it, it, it never made the air, but maybe we should write it. Yeah, it's something there. Yeah, maybe not. All right, throw yourself down a flight of stairs. But yeah, yeah, the, we've all had wacky living situations. I think that's pretty standard. I lived in a shoebox in the East Village. I had a... DJ neighbor who was like a sexy Armenian guy. DJ, Ooh. his name was Akram. Akram, yeah, which is a Batman villain, probably. That's Arkham Asylum. Arkham, yes, close. But uh, then my other roommate was a sexy Asian guy with long hair and a leather jacket. What? Come so, on, you're making this I up. Swear this to sounds God. like a this sounds like a kid's coloring I book. I swear to God. What? I, I lived in a closet and I had a futon that was up, and if you folded it out, it wouldn't go. That's how little the room was. If you folded oh, it, wow. if it folded it flat, it would it would hit the wall. It wouldn't get. It would be like a taco. Hot Asian long hair leather jacket. That sounds like the Carlin made up thing. A big fat Chinese guy with red hair. <laughs> no, he looked like. Steve Aoki. Is that his name? Steve yeah. Aoki. Yeah, Sounds he's like a, a Tarantino villain. Any are you Aoki? Yes, yeah. yes, karaoke. <laughs> but uh, the guy was always fucked up, never saw him sober. He was like a real biker, like badass East Village. When East Village was East Village, Mars Bar and all that oh, shit. Yeah. He was one of those types. I think I'm sure he was a heroin addict, which is weird because he's Asian, so you assume he'll be successful. But crazy living. Crazy living. Did a lot of bedwetting in there, a lot of good writing. I was on unemployment there. Saddest moment of my life. What do you mean? Well, what? I need I need structure. Ah, uh, structure. I got on unemployment. I was like, this is gonna be great. I get three hundred bucks a week. I'll do comedy and get drunk every night. Try to make out with a lady. Mm -hmm. Killing it. And I would sleep till three p.m. Then you go out again. You start drinking. You're not getting anything done. Structure, Jerry. You need a path. You need a goal. Right. You got to have a goal. Got to have a structure. The timing, the structure. Did you hear he fucked her? Yes. You know, uh, that's Chuck, right? That's your jam? Blink-182? I feel like you're a Blink-182 douche. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, can I, can, I can see you. All the small things. Small things. I can see and you you're like, this concert. is my shit right here. Yeah, with the, with the, with the big poster going, ooh, I love you. Chris, or whatever his name is. She left me roses by the stairs. <laughs> Thanks. 
let me know she cares. <laughs> oh, that shit was brutal. But I liked it at the time. It was catchy. Well, the earlier album was better. Damn it, kicks ass. It kind of rocked. But then they got a little too like, man, the, all the yeah. small things is one of the worst songs in history. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. I, hate, I, I hate all Yucka the small Roo. things. But I, but I love Blake. You general. hate all the small things, even your own dick? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Their their first album was fun because they were making fun of the boy band thing was so big in the video. They're all being fake sexy with a fan and running on the beach, and then one will get attacked by that's a all Rottweiler. The small things. That's the all the small things video. Ah shit! Uh, yeah, the, now the, you love the, it. The, the video was good. The video yeah. was good. Well, the video they gave. I think the record company gave them money. Yes. to shoot uh, like a three hundred thousand dollar video. What they decided to do was take the three hundred thousand dollars and hand it out to people, that was and a, film it on a whatever camera. That what? was uh, the rock show video. Yeah, yeah that, that was did. fun. That was that Blink is great. They're great, but the but the uh, the bubblegum stuff is tough. The singles are the worst songs from Blink for sure. But well, damn it, kicks ass. Damn is great. Well, now that uh, the drummer there, what's his name? Travis Barker. He's banging one of the Kardashians, and apparently he's got a real hog. It's all oh. pipes down there, and. Uh, they're getting married. They just got married, but uh, he calls it El Diablo. That's his dick's that's name? His, that's what he calls his no dog. No kidding. Travis yeah. is a real musician. He's, like, prolific. He's really? Excellent. Oh, yeah. Now, is he Bob Barker's son? Ooh. Yes. Or daughter? <laughs> is he really? <laughs> or daughter. Is he really? No, no, I don't think that so. would be something. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, he gives back to the pussies. Wait, wait. Now, what did he do? What did Bob Barker do? Something with dogs. He neutered the dogs. The that dogs hate it. him. Uh, really? I think he's bad. Well, I, I don't know what the dogs really. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think, I think he stopped the neutering. <laughs> no, he wanted them neutered. He no, said spayed neuter, or neutered. Neuter is good. Well, he said he's good to the dog. Ah, uh, I guess because you don't want too many dogs. They don't yeah. want like Peru out here. Yeah. Right, he's a he's a dog Hitler. Peru, Peru, Peru is almost dog. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. she's a dog. <laughs> Kramer. Yeah. Um, wow. Where are we? I'm all over the map here. Yeah, I don't know what the hell we're doing. We're Bob Barker. Price is right. Uh, yeah. You know, One dollar. Eleven. Uh, yeah. Where we had a Samoa and a Barker and a, and a giant dog, not I, Chucks. I barked once in New York. Same. Barking's in, in comedy terms. That's when you stand outside and say, hey, we got a show here, folks. Blow my dad for two tickets. Oh, yeah. That, that was, was a one-time deal only. <laughs> I got those tickets. It was worth it. But... I will say I barked for a while. It was brutal. I'm a new I'm a New Orleans kid. I've never seen snow. It's freezing in New York. I don't own a jacket. I'm wearing a burlap sack and, and a garbage bag. And uh, the guy go. He was so mean. I'm not gonna say his name. You know him. Oh, I can't wait. Can you send me a signal or text me? Uh, Just say it. You bleep. Let's see. It. Hold on. Let me see That's if I can sign it. Hold on. I'll do it. Is it hard to bleep? No, it's not hard to bleep. Do yeah, okay. act it out. Sounds it out. Oh, oh. I can't bleep that. I don't what? know. What? No. Oh, jeez. I don't know, Jeff. I don't know him. Hey, you know Jeff. Whoop. Well, I you can say Jeff. So. But yeah, he was a kook, and he had a, he had a room up on 112th. Oh, yeah. That's where Tom's Restaurant is. That's right. Monk's Diner. If you're ever in New York and you want to see the diner from Seinfeld, 112th of Broadway. Yeah, but, it, but it's, it's up there. I mean, uh, you're in Canada, basically. But uh, the guy was freezing out. I had no coat. I'm shivering. I'm a southern queef. And he goes, uh, all right, you bark for three hours. I'll give you like six minutes. I was like, done. So I'm doing the thing, I'm freezing, and I go in a bodega for like six minutes because I'm freezing. I had to warm up, you know? And then he, I walk out and he goes, six minutes in the bodega, huh? You're off the show. And I was like, oh. Uh, and I had to go all the way. But I did like two and a half hours. Oh, uh, jeez. Went to the bodega, looked at the, the candy, and, and warmed up, and he got me. Got some hard candy in there. Whoa, Whoa Jesus! Tits. Easy there. Sorry, gotta, I shifted the weight. I did a weight shift. It's a heavy foot. Uh, <laughs> it's a big coat. But yeah, um, cortex. Yeah, I barked for um, soapbox comedy. Remember soapbox Ooh, comedy? Ooh, I don't. That might have been before your time. It was like because yep. when I first was getting in there, the internet was like new. This is why I've been slow on the internet and success and all that stuff. Sure. But I would go to soapbox comedy, and it was some kind. They would produce these shows, and they had a website, and I was like, I'll get in that way. But you had to bark and it was the same thing i barked for two hours and i don't want to talk to anybody and the guy i did the set and i thought i would get in that way the classic thing yes but for you young comics out there if you bark then you're a barker they have no incentive to have you not bark yes bob you just barked you're barking why would they go ah hey, you don't have to bark anymore they need a barker exactly if you're willing to do it you do it so don't do it don't do it so then i would bark louis gomez started as a bar he was a bark just a barker ah uh -huh, all, all did you know that yeah no bite he wasn't even a comedian he would just bark really? for a job. That was his gig. Wow. Well, he's working. Well, he's barking, baby. Yeah. Uh, by the way, his dog died. That was sad. 
Wow, no bark there. No. <laughs> Jeez, barking up the wrong tree. But uh, we love Gomez. Good for him. I mean, it was a gig. I mean, it still is a gig. You see those those numbskulls at Times Square going, hey, we got uh, we got Ralphie May at the, at the Laugh Chuck. And you're like, wait a minute. He's dead. They're like, well, he's here. We got him. <laughs> and you're like, all right, I'll go see him. It's just an open casket. Well, so I, I barked, casket. and then I, I did a set, and I killed. And he was like, wow. I was, I was like, it's happening. He's like, that was great, man. He's like, you're so good for your age. I was like 20 years old and 19. Mm. And he's like, you really got something. And I said, thank you. Thank God, because that was brutal. And he's like, well, can you come bark tomorrow at 4? And oh, I was boy. like, no, I thought I just made it off that Yeah. Thing. And he was like, you're not going to make it. I'm just sorry. He's like, you just don't have it. It's sad. It's sad because they don't need us. You know, that's the thing. You, you, you think you'll kill and some guy with a with a file cabinet and a big landline will go, you're in, kid. He's smoking a cigar. But they don't need you. There's 8,000 comics who are also funny. It's like when you get a guy going, hey, I'm 49. I'm a white guy. I got a half an act. Can you get me in at the cellar? Like, well, what are they going to do? Right. Why would they want you? They got yeah. people. But they seem to do a lot of it. Well, they're, they're bringing in some... <laughs> Some ruffians these days, but hey. We're back. To each his own. <laughs> All right, barking. I'll be barking soon. Um, but yeah, so barking was bad. It was brutal because you're just so tired and exhausted and the kooks, but we made it. But he told me to my face, like, you're not going to make it. You don't have the, you don't have the tenacity. And I said, well, we'll just see about that, you son of an onion. Yeah. And here I am in an office trying to yes. talk quietly so we don't get kicked out. Hell yeah. Just no place I'd rather be. Yammering on mm-hmm. and on. Next to a guy, uh, I assume, is a divorce lawyer, or he's... A divorced lawyer. Yeah, he's on his ninth <laughs> divorce in there. Um, <laughs> hey, Jess, where are you flying from? You just oh. got, I'm on my way to London. I'm leaving to London in an hour. I'm going straight from here Look at you. to London. We're ships in the, in the, the night. night. Thank you. Uh, night is day, black is white. White and gay is wrong. Straight. Uh, <laughs> so where are you coming from? All dogs go to heaven except the gay ones. I'm coming from Dallas, Fort Worth, oh. DFW, baby. Yes. Long, good old three-hour flight. I'm on no sleep. I I got such a problem there, Fatty. I uh, I knew I had an 8 a.m. flight, and uh, you know the openers are like, well, we had a great weekend. We sold out seven shows. Let's get one drink. And then here I am uh, on the floor funneling vodka. Tell these people to suck each other off. Say, I hey, know. we hung out Friday. We hung out all day. I hate these extra hangs. We'll hang at the club. We I hung know, out from 7 p.m. till midnight. That's a five-hour hang. I agree, but it's buddies. And then I, I, I'm texting buddies. with them to, Text with him today. He's like, man, I'm hurting. I'm like, you're hurting. I'm on no sleep. I'm on fumes. I'm doing a podcast. I'm gay now. And uh, what do we need to do those shots for? You don't need to do the you shots. You don't need to do the shots. The shots, they don't add the fun. You realize this. It doesn't add any fun. That's the That was one of the big moments of my life was when you, me, and Phil Hanley went to the diner. And we had after the Caroline's Christmas party. Oh, we were, we were tuned up that and night. And I just sat there ordering beers. I know, but then we went to the diner, and I was like just drinking Bud Lights I at six that. in the morning. Yes, and because I thought it was fun, and like we're drinking at the diner. It's like swingers we're and keeping Sinatra. It going. And then they handed us the bill, and I'm like, "This is all of my money. Legitimately, right. I have to hand this Greek diner waiter all of my money." Yes, and my head hurts because I'm just drinking beers with a grilled cheese sandwich. Then I bumped into my wife going home, and I thought that would have been just as much more fun. If we just hung out and told stories without the beers. Of course, of course. But you want to keep it going. You're chasing that dragon. You don't want it to end, Jerry. So, uh, yeah, I got to grow up. I mean, at least you were 12 when you figured that out. I'm 38. I mean, But the counterpoint is you can afford to drink. I had yeah. no money. I was literally uh, at zero. I was like, I have zero dollars right. and no prospects or job either. I mean, it's also a little bit of a testament to how we could, we could, we could rally, baby. I mean, we're doing this... <laughs> We probably got to the Caroline's party early. It's free food, free booze. We danced all night. We headlocked. We we shucked. We jived. And then we kept going. I bet everybody else went to bed. I could have danced all night. And yeah, they were right to go to bed. The sun was up. Of course. And then you lose the whole next day. It's, it's nice. horrendous. It's nice to see the sunrise sometimes. And then the hang. Not from 57th Street and 7th Avenue, it's not. Uh, maybe in like a field, it's nice. Sure, maybe a beach. Yeah, or, uh, but, you know, uh, the Northern Lights, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, you see the hookers get killed and the hobos and the, the needles, but yeah. But yeah, it's about being together. It's just hanging out. I here, mean, how here. fun is this? This I'm having nice. fun. 
Yeah. If works. I was drunk, it wouldn't be fun. I'd be like, shut up. You fucking suck. You don't even know what you're talking about. You fucking yeah. idiot. I'm glad you quit. Uh, I'd be like, Chuck, what are you even doing here? You fucking asshole. I could press a button, you fucking piece right. of shit. You're not my boss. Yeah. You're <laughs> not the boss. I'd be throwing hot tea in your face and be yeah. like, why do you think that's funny? It's funny. You're well, wet now. You were a fun drunk, but you were moody. I was quite you, moody. You could turn on a dime, that Jekyll and uh, Anal thing. A lot of it's moods, true. big moods. Anal and Hyde. Well, when I was fun, it was fun. Oh, a lot of moonwalking. They, they called me Crazy Legs. Yes, yes, easy. Yana yeah. still calls me Crazy Legs. The moody blues. Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Lucy. When you've had a long day and you want to unwind like a grown man, grab your favorite Lucy gum or nicotine patch. I love the flavors of Lucy gum. They got the best gum I've ever had. Forget about it. When I want gum, I go to Lucy because they got the best tasting gum. You know all about the flavors. They got a lot of great flavors. You're going to love it. It's not like any gum you've ever had. If you've been looking for an alternative to smoking, and you should be, why not switch to the nicotine gum that you feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.c. Oh, that's lucy.co and use promo code Tuesdays at checkout. And if you're a listener from Canada, well, Lucy is now available at ca.lucy.co. Also, I have to read this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code Tuesdays. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Manscaped. Smooth used to be enough, but now there's ultra smooth. Ready to go ultra smooth? Are you? Are you ready? I don't know if you are. Our friends at Manscaped are here to help. Step one, grab your handy lawnmower 4.0 for a trim. Step two, pull out crop exfoliator and exfoliate. Step three, lather up. See where you're shaving with the clean crop gel shaving gel just for the groin. Bing. Step four, it's time to shave. The crop shaver was designed for shaving the groin area with confidence. All the products in the ultra smooth package are vegan, cruelty fee free and sulfate free. You don't want no sulfates in there. It's time to get up close and personal with the best tools for the job. The ultra smooth package from Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Tuesdays at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code Tuesdays at manscaped.com. Smooth out your fellas with the relaunched ultra smooth package from the fellas at Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Good times. We are also lucky too. When we were really blacking out. There was not a ton of cell phone cameras around. No, I did. I, I fit everything all right. I mean, like, I mean, I, there's a lot of you know what dudes out there that are pretty spicy. Check those out, folks. I think they're still up. No, uh, don't check them out. All right. <laughs> um, Mike Cannon <laughs> texted me one time and he was like, "Hey, I listen to a bunch of old you know what dudes. Uh, you got problems here." And I'm oh, like, really? "Oh, great." Oh yeah. boy. Well, it's it's like a Hunter Biden laptop. You got to get rid of that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Anal fuck sixty nine. Did Is you it, see that? What's that? That was one of his passwords. Oh, I thought that was a Blink-182 album. <laughs> no, Anal Fuck 69 was Hunter Biden's Really? Password. I love the guy. Yeah, that's that's classic. Sounds, that's, that's, that's like an episode we have. That's good stuff. <laughs> good for him. Anal um, Fuck 69. But yeah, it was, it was ah, out there. It was wild. But yeah. Son. And I had a, one ex-girlfriend. She wasn't on social media. And uh, Thank Christ almighty, because a lot of this stuff. I mean, shitting in the shoe, that would have been all over Twitch and uh, oh, you know, Facebook yeah. Live. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that would be an OnlyFans right there. We got a guy <laughs> shitting in a, in a pump. <laughs> That's big. I mean, you could have cleaned up on that or she could have. I did clean up a little bit and still missed my flight. <laughs> I thought you made it. I mi- No, I missed the flight, and then I had to get the ah. next flight, which was to Boston, Boston to Seattle, and I flew with <laughs> shit all down the leg. Yeah, that's that's tough in the coach. But I will say... Middle seat. Yes, I will say... You got a you milked that story. You I think you got about nineteen thousand hours. You you got a full war and peace out of that story. It's all out there. Well, people want to hear the story. It's all pipes. so. And I always preface it by saying I've told this about forty eight places, but sure. uh, people like the story. They want to hear the story, and uh, it's not it's not good. Well, stories are big. I mean, it's it's the whole name of the game here. But uh, I remember not today going, it isn't. 
I remember going to <laughs> we'll get there. I remember going to bars and people would go, Tell the tell everybody the virginity story. I mean, it was before phones. You just sit around at a bar with thirty eight hundred beer cans and you'd be like, Oh, all right, and he'd laugh and high five and then one another guy would tell his story and that was that was a it was a fun night. Yeah, that's uh, you know, you gotta you gotta share the stuff, the fun. Campfire, the whole thing goes back to the cave queefs. Yeah, cave queef cunt. So you're in Dallas. Yes, Dallas. Cowgirls. One of my favorite show, uh, favorite clubs, the Improv ah. in, in Addison. I you were going to say City, and I was going to push back a little. No, well, there's a reason uh, Kennedy got out of there. But yeah, brutal, brutal uh, hangover, but great time, great group. Had Andrew Youngblood opening, and we sold it out. We sold out a merch, and... It's just a fun town. I love Texas. I really do. Texas is fun. You gotta love Texas. I mean, Texas feels like home to me because of the wife and the Christmas and all the business. It just yeah. feels nice. And the the sun just <laughs> stays up there. It lays yes. low and it's flat. Other than Austin, it's not, of course. But you know what I mean. It's flat just earth there. just a beautiful place. And you know, there's some. There's some they, they can do some improvements, but for the most sure. part, it's just a good time down there. There was two shootings while I was there. Good times, and yeah. uh, I probably more than that too that they reported. Aha! Uh-huh. Well, I couldn't find an abortion place to save my life, but uh, great, great stuff. Great crowds there. They just you feel a little freer there. It's kind of like Florida with with boots and cowboy hats mm-hmm. and no Jews. Yeah, Texas is a good time. I don't know when I'm making it back there, but uh, really, I'm all up. I got a Mike Holka. I got San Antonio. I got uh, Dallas. I got Houston. I'm all over Tejas. Well, Dallas. I was in Dallas in uh, February and March. I did Fort Worth, Dallas, February, March, and then I was supposed to be in Austin a couple weeks ago. They canceled on me. I heard. <laughs> hey, what are they trans? The, the the email went out and said due to unforeseen circumstances. I had a hundred people texting me going, "Hey, what the fuck? Why'd you cancel?" Brutal. But uh, it's not him. They always go right to the source. Go to the club. Yes, the club. Well, it's not that they can't do whatever. They weren't ready. So I'll be back in January or February. I think I'll be in Austin mm-hmm. and then Houston. Uh, I was just there on th- uh, Valentine's Day. So I'm all over Texas in the past. And now you're going <whistles> straight to old foggy London town. This, London. Is, this is a big jump. Uh, if you're hearing that, listen to this travel. I'm going. I can't wait. I love the itinerary. So I'm going to London tonight. At the time of recording, as the time you're hearing this, I'm in London right now. Sure. Show is sold out, which is very exciting. Ooh. I mean, it seats 40 people, but still. Hey, that's all you want. You can't get a ticket to see old Listeru no, in London. Thank you. <laughs> You're like Mary Poppins. You're gonna come in on an umbrella and click your heels, or what is that Wizard of Oz? Shit. Wizard of Oz is heel clicking. I don't get the Poppins riff. I don't get it either. You're popping in. All right. You're Mary Poppins. Poppins. In London. She has the umbrella. Also London. Oh, is London. that London? Yeah. Yes. No yes. Wizard of Oz is not London. That's mm. Kansas. Ah. Different. It's actually Oz. Well, well, she ends up in Oz. Yeah, it's true. Unless right. she wakes up from a dream. So it's Kansas. Uh, Kansas. There's yeah. no place like home. Um, no place like homosexuals. Yes. Uh, that stunk. All is right. it possible I'm jet lag already? I don't think yes, that works. Yes, I know I am. But so I'm going to London for 11 days. Then I fly from London to New York home for 12 hours. By the way, right now I'm currently home for 22 hours. I just got back from Raleigh. 22 hours, good movie. More on that later. So I get back from Raleigh. I'm home for a, a day. Then I fly to London, in London for 11 days. Wow. Then I fly back. I'm home in New York for like 26 hours. I fly straight to Seattle, SeaTac, to go see my niece for her birthday, do a one-nighter in Tacoma on May 30th. Then I'm there for a week. Then I fly home for three days, then back across the country to San Francisco. What? For three nights. Punchline? At, at Punchline. Holy Then I fly. From, by the way, that flight, I don't even want to mention these flights. Are you booking flights? Oh, 1,400 here, 1,500 there. It's crazy. I mean, Putin is fucking us. Is, it, is that who's doing I it? I think it's Putin is, is fucking, Putin, Putin, I call him. <laughs> yeah, hi, Putin. Uh, I mean, this guy sucks. And I know we printed about $75 trillion as whatever. That was two different presidents, by the way. Fuck your mother. Putin. Yeah. And so anyway, so Putin, he did whatever he's doing. I don't know. He's fighting somebody. I don't know. He's got cancer. He's 5'7". He knows jujitsu. He's a jerk off, but. You got that right. So the, the flights are two grand. I'm making 2200 The flight costs 2100 I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> But wow. so then I go to Seattle and Vancouver. So I'm going to be on 
adjusting to London time and then immediately go eight hours backwards in uh, Seattle, then come three hours forward just to go three hours back again. Ah, uh, you're, you're living on a plane here. You're living on a prayer. I mean, uh, we're talking six hours plus six hours is 12 hours plus six, 18. That's 24 hours Ooh, of flying in, uh, you know, 10 days. You're about to rake in some fat Miles Davis over here. This is yes. big stuff. You got to hit that lounge, too. Can I ask you why you're in London for 11 days? It seems like such a long time. Feels long. <sighs> they booked me, and that we're doing this TV show, Joke Off, on the CW. They're looking for Americans that are in London, by the way, if you want to get tickets. Oh. They want, because it's an American show being shot in London. So hit us up for tickets if you happen to be an American in London. I'm there the 26th, 27th, 28th. Yeah, you're there for four days. I'm there for 11. Yeah, yeah, I think you overdid it there. That's... I didn't do it. That's what they sent me. It's fucking up my whole schedule. You're Mary Poppins. But it'll be fun. I like London. You know, I might meet a lady with teeth like mine. You know, yes. it'll be nice. Sweep a chimney, eat a crumpet, tea. You like tea? Love tea. I'm drinking tea right now. All right, tea bag. They respect tea. Americans don't respect tea. Nah, tea stinks. No, they don't. It's water with a bag in it. Get out of here. That's what your fucking cock is, dude. Okay, oh, well, if I put my sack in the toilet, same shit. Um, I've done that. Long balls. Oh, yeah, and salty, if I might add. High water, long balls. But ah, uh, So I'm movie. doing two episodes of the show. Four episodes, but they shoot two at a time. So two is better than four, or whatever the fuck. Two is better than one. That's true. But they happen to be filming a few days apart. Plus, mm. it takes time. to. They want you to get there early to adjust to the time. Right. And then they wanted me to stay longer. They're like, you don't want to leave the day after you shoot. So I go, hey, guys, what are you trying to do? Convert really? me to Londonism? Yeah, what the hell? I think they want you to be a Brit over there. They want you to be a mate. How well, many are you shooting, Mark? Shooting? Yeah. Are you doing four, two, or are you just doing two? I think I'm doing four in two days. Oh. Still, that's a lot. He's going for three days. You're going for 11? No, no, I'm not going for three days. I'm going for six. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Six, I was like, ah, that's too much. I got to get back to New York. I'm I'm overseas. I'll I'll panic, but I'm bringing the lady. Mm -hmm. We'll do a whole thing. Mm -hmm. We'll blow you Big Ben and, you know, kill the queen or whatever. We should hang. I've never met this lady. What? We should we should dingle around a little bit, you, you know? You, Matt, I, apparently you sent her a DM the other day, I well, heard. Well, twice. I don't know what that's about. Oh, boy. That was a lot of DMs. I couldn't get it to end, by the uh, way. It well. was it was tough. She said, hey, what's up with Mark's dick? Can you help me out here? She's tough. I can't get it to end either. But Why did uh, that I'm start? trying. Oh, I was trying to get you guys to move to Queens. Ah. I said it on the podcast. I threatened three weeks in a row, and I said, I'm doing it. Why don't you move to Queens? And she said, you're an idiot. I don't even like you. Fuck there off. you go. Yeah, and, uh, well. I can read between lines, but... Uh, she, she hates Samoans, so it's not a good show. Shot. But any jizz, we got to hang. And you know what I'm doing? I think we mentioned that. I'm going, I'm <laughs> shooting right to fat Paris. What? I'm going to the, the French Open's going on. Oh, Roland Garros. Oh, now, 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 give me the run through. How's this travel? Have you worked it out? Have you done the 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 numbers? Have you crunched? No number crunch. I don't need to crunch. What? I do crunches at the gym. I, you take a, a train, it goes under the English Channel or the Strait. Channel. Dope, whatever the fuck it is. Which channel? channel CNN? On MTV, I guess. Oh, okay. August 1st, 81. So I take the train and just go right underneath the uh, water. You pop up in Paris, and then you take another train over to Roland Garros, and, uh, which I've gone to before. It was a hell of a tourney. I'm going back. I'm going to hope to see Ooh. Alvarez or uh, whoever. Wow. No Djokovic. Because huh? I can't. Be. He'll be there. Whoa. He's playing. He's back. The Joker, they call him. Yeah, they call him that. I don't love the name. No, he's annoying. He's never said a joke, and it's like, we're Jokers. That's a good point. Uh-huh, I have a point. Um, he does this business. Get out of here. What is this? He gives his heart away after. Oh, it's so gay. I'm eating here. He goes That's to the each corner. He, he goes like this, and then he comes over here and does this. Oh, it's really embarrassing. Oh, God. I, I do this one, maybe. But uh, <laughs> give the heart away. God, man, what a dweeb. By the way, I recorded, I'm recording farts again and sending them to folks. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm upset I'm not on the list. Uh, well, I sent one to Matt Wayne. He had, uh, I sent my, nef- my nephew, you know. Check this out. This is a good one. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I gotta start wow, that was a wetty. That wasn't real. How good is that? That was a stock whoopee cushion. <laughs> Trim, long fart. It's got the time stamp and everything. Wow. That's a beauty. I mean, that's a uh, that's great classic. A. That could win an Emmy. <laughs> classic. Here's a class. This one's labeled classic. 
Oh, like, yeah, there you go. Classic. classic that was like a, like a bunt. You could a game. sell those to like a Foley studio. Yeah, you could. <laughs> this, one's, H this, Foley. One's this one's titled Little. And that little aftershock. Oh, I love but, it. But, after oh, that. I got to tell you about this bit. <laughs> I love farts. I don't care. There's, right now, there's like 50 people jumping on their computer to write list as a child. Uh, blow me. The farts are funny. <laughs> I'm gay. Him. Kill yourself. This guy. You ever work with Mellow Mike in Raleigh? Mellow Mike. Oh, black guy. Mike Mellow. Mellow Sweet Mike. Oh, you work guy. with him in Wilson. Yeah, he's a he's a me he is mellow. He's quite mellow. He's a hilarious guy. Good hang. I had mellow a great yo. time in Raleigh. And uh, he had a bit. This is one of my favorite bits of all time. Oh, yeah. I, I want to buy it off this guy. Well, he's one of these guys who's been doing comedy 900 years. He's one of those sleeper, sleeper blacks. I think so. Sleeper cell, sleeper, sleeper. What else is sleeper? Black Hawk Down, uh, no. Sleep Over. Sleeper. She's, what is a sleeper it's cell? It's a movie. Sleepers. Sleepers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what is a sleeper cell? Is that where Cosby is? I have no In idea. Jail? Hey, that's not bad. Uh -huh. That's a decent tweet. I'll tweet it tonight. But he's not the sleeper. That should be like, make you sleeper. Yeah, uh, now it's ruined. He's not really a sleeper. Yeah, yeah. I had a trapper keeper. So yeah. A sleeper cell is a terrorist cell right. whose members work undercover in an area until sent into action. Hmm. Well, What's a fun. cell? So I think, that, I think that means basically... Uh, it's so let's cell. say you like want like to a infiltrate pit. a community, you they'd send you in and you just act like a regular part of that community and you're that's you sleeping. Right. And then they're like, All right, go blow up the the subway. And right. they, then you run in they're and you blow up the subway. Us. Yeah, they're amongst us. Right? So a cell is a person. I it's think not so. a cell. Yeah, I think it's I, I think a cell is a person. Ah. You don't you don't hear that about other people. There, there's no other there's no Johnny cell or, yeah, or, or is fat weird. cell. Oh, I wonder where it came. Oh, there's fat cells. I guess there are fat cells. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is America, folks. Uh, so, anyways, here's the bit. He said, "I'm getting older now. I, I fart without even trying. Like a, the body's just like, just let that go. Don't even worry about it." And he goes, "The problem is, I was in a waiting room, and the guy next to me thought I said something. Ah. So the guy says, what 'What'd you say?' And so now I got to come up with something that sounds like the fart. Ah. And he goes, uh." LeBron. Oh. James. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's gold. Oh, that's, great. that's gold. And I've heard every fart LeBron. joke on this side of the Mississippi, James. and I never heard that take. <laughs> that's fucking gold. I was dying. I was like a kid in the back. I'm giggling. I had my feet dangling. His fart had a tag, which was also a fart. I know. It's that's beautiful. Brilliant. And it's one of those jokes you're already laughing because you're like, I can't wait to hear what he said. Yes. The, 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 it's one of those jokes where the premise is so rich that you're like, I'm already love it. No matter what he says. And you're like, is he going to be like, uh, how about those rooms? Like, whatever. Right, like a, right. Because I mean, you can't tell what kind of fart it's going to be. You're anticipating the noise he's going to make. And he went with LeBron, and then he got the last name in. I mean, that's a well-constructed fart zinger. And it's funny to think he's in the waiting room, and he's just like this. LeBron James, you know? Right, right. Because he had to come up with something. Oh, that too, yeah. Beautiful joke, working on many levels. All how right, how long have we been here, by the way? It feels like we've been recording for two hours. We're bouncing. Like 32, 33. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't see a, uh, Larry Bird. a half moon. I was uh, distracted by the fart joke. Give All us the right. moon. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Steph. Curry. I'm going to be doing that all day with different players. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, this is really a classic. Wow. That is just gold. That was an Isaiah Thomas right there. <laughs> Holy <laughs> hell. I, mean, that was a, I, might have, I might have put out a Denver Nugget. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're having too much fun. But tell me how Wilson was, because that's the gig. I told you it's in the middle of nowhere. It's the weirdo spot. It's the countryside. Talk Wilson. to me, Wilson. Yeah, they're all bummed, by the way, because you're trashing the gig. They're like, what the hell? They're like, Mark Aye. came. They're like, Mark came. We thought he liked it. I'm listening to the podcast. They're all like... Condoling each uh, other, consoling. Consoling. Cons you get condolences, but you console. Ah, that's right. That's weird. That's right. Then there's a console in the shouldn't, car. Shouldn't it be consolences? Where's this, the D coming from? My dad. Yeah, <laughs> it's coming from my lap, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got a point there, Fatty, but I want to clear the air here with the Wilsons of the world, you know, Wilson, uh, home improvement. The gig was good. 
Love the gig. Good crowd. Good setup. Good venue. You, know, you kept giving me the opposite. Good people. You fucked me. But I had to land. I had to have dinner with 18 guys. You had to land. We, uh, the gig on the land? That doesn't even make any sense. Well, I took a gig. Well, you want, a, you a, want a gig that you don't land? You have to land the you plane. You just cruise over and go, farts. <laughs> LeBron. But you have to land. That's how the plane works. Otherwise, you'd still be up there. That's, That's what, what I'm, I'm saying. saying to you. Okay, you land the plane. You get out. So you're talking to my Aunt Sylvie. You got to get into a car with a stranger. You drive for 30 minutes. So you talk about Putin and Biden's it's, laptop. It's an hour, by the way. This is why you got to rent a car. I, I rent. know. That was my mistake. I know. Exactly. You're All telling right. me. You're in my head saying it's a bad gig because you didn't rent a car. <laughs> So you're stuck yabba dabba doing with some guy for two hours. Well, you gotta I rent the car, I and then now to, I'm driving the bus. I didn't know to rent a car, but you had me who was already there, and I told you, hey, watch out for the, the car no, thing. No, I rent a car anyways. Well, oh, on the road, okay, I rent okay. a car. You know why? Because the country's covered in kooks. That's right. I can't even walk outside. I was in Raleigh. It's driving me kooks kook there? crazy. I'm in Raleigh. It's the most beautiful neighborhood. You're on campus, basically, and then it's all like roads, and it's, it's lovely. Yeah. The first day I get there from Wilson, I'll come, I'll come back to Wilson, I'll pick it up. <laughs> I walk out the door, and I'm going to the Y, MCA, which uh, is right next door. Why? Because I want to work out, oh, and I, I like young boys. Got so it. it's right next door. I walk out, and I'm like, going to the Y, proactive. I look across. There's a bus stop, a guy you know, sitting there like that. Uh, and I feel bad stop. for him. I'm very empathetic. But he gets up, and he comes running over. He's got a limp. And I'm just like, I'm, I've been out of the hotel Wow. For one minute, and he comes jogging across the street, and I go, all right. I'm literally walking 50 feet. Yeah. Is and I it- go, hey, and he's like, can I, can I bum you some money off yet? I feel for the guy. I do. It's not his fault. Sure. And I go, yeah, I got a couple bucks. So I pull my money out. I give him two bucks, and he goes, can I get two more, man? Uh, and I'm like, I'm sorry. And it's not coop. bad, and I understand. It's fine. I, well, I'm not in danger, whatever. But it's just the principle. You walk out, and immediately, oh, hey. And I'm like. Farts on my mother. Brutal. This country's a kook box. You can't shake it, but he's a southern kook, which I think are a little more laid back. I think so. I think so. Well, more you know. Genteel. It's so weird. The, the South. It's like Virginia's the South. Kentucky's I, yeah. the South. North Carolina's the South. I'm like, there's like 1,800 miles below it. I hate it's that. It's the Central. I think that's just all the, the people who wanted to keep slaves, so we just call it that. Because right. Tennessee's in the middle, you know, and then we call that the South. Yeah, it's and all very strange. I'm from the fucking... I mean, you walk out my door, I hit the Gulf. Right. You know, Florida, that's South. They're in Cuba's asshole. Right. But then Florida feels like its own thing. When I hear South, I think Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Texas is its own thing. Florida's like, obviously the South. I understand yeah. it's the South. People write to you and go, you fucking asshole. And then Arizona doesn't feel South at all. That's like... That's the Southwest. West. Yeah, Southwest as a whole has roadrunners and Indians and turquoise and jade. What the mm. hell's jade? I'm not sure. Pink it? I think she's an asshole, yeah. You got that right. <laughs> Alopecia. <laughs> she sucks. Fuck yeah. both of them. But any jizz. So, the Wilson gig, I'm all nervous, but then I get this. This, this was funny to me. So I get the message, sold out. <laughs> and I go, hey... You like Things that. are starting to pick up here. I'm selling out Wilson, North Carolina. I can't even imagine what Raleigh. They're going to be building bleachers to add seats over there in Raleigh. You got that right. They're not going to be able to handle me. Wolfpack. And, uh, <laughs> wait, wait, what's Raleigh? What's in Raleigh? Good nights. Oh, you're doing good night. Got it. I'm there got for the it. weekend doing good nights. Okay, good night. So I fly in a day early to do Wilson, which is way out there. It's an hour east. That's what I'm telling you. It's a, it's a, it's a thing. Now turn me east. Uh, so I get the car, rent the car. I love the car because you feel free. Is there any better feeling than getting off that cramped plane, the lines, the shit? The whole thing, and then you're in that car, and you're just—it's a Volkswagen Jetta, which oh, is a nice ride. Oh, I love a Jetta. Germans—they really know how to do machines. So Ovens. I'm, I'm cruising around. I'm driving the bus, and Hell I go yeah. out there to Wilson. The you're hotel Batman. is shit. The city's shit. I had Chick Fil A. That was nice. There you go. They're very nice there. I get to the gig, and and it's sold out. So I'm ready to get blown. I'm ready for the bunch of Southern bells to eat me out. Bring it on, whores. And I walk in, and I go. These don't look like Tuesdays to me. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm just looking. It's like the Blues Brothers. There's like, uh, you know. A chicken wire. Chicken wire. Is a oh, chicken, boy. One of the great deliveries ever. Tom Malone. Chicken wire. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a couple of uh, yeehaws out there. A it's couple a, of hat-wearing, toothless yokels. Bit of a redneck uh, town. I work with two good comics there. Chris Tivoli, I think is how you say his name, and Matt Dameron, who must have been the guy that picked you up, I think. Big damn. Because he said, I'm, I'm going to pick you up. And I said, oh, no, I have a car. And he said, oh, thank God I called, whatever. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but both really good guys, both funny guys, too. 
So I do the gig. This is the most eventful thing that happens. Okay, lay it on me. I'm on stage. I'm doing jokes about my wife, you know, something new, something different. Take her, please. And this guy, this like Hick guy, he's behind the light, so I can't really see him, but he feels big. Uh, Bill Hicks. He says, you got any naked photos of her? Wait, uh, a heckle. A heckle. I see. Now he's setting up a joke. Okay. And the joke is, I say, no. And he goes, you want some? Sure, classic. It's an old classic gag. It's the one gag he knows. He's excited for it. Yeah, well, he's ruining a show, though. He certainly is. So he says, yeah, you got any naked photos of your wife? And I say, yeah, I got a ton of them. I got all kinds from behind, up the top. The whole My phone is filled with them. I'm not sharing them with you, though. I'll tell you that, sir. So you knew it was coming. I didn't know it was coming. I, that was just my natural reaction. Okay, because that does deflect from, from the hillbillies the zinger. Well, so this is what happens. So I say, I got a bunch of them. My phone's full of them. I got them. I share them with my dad, but I'm not sharing them with you, young man. And the crowd kind of laughs. And I go, but anyways. And then I hear, you want some? <laughs> <laughs> He's still trying it. He still went for it. I go, <laughs> well, yeah, I go. It pauses and people, people go, oh, ooh. And they're like nice people there. The sure. South is like friendly people. So they're like. Man, why why are you disrespecting our buddy here? Right. You know, that wasn't a good accent for North Carolina. I can't do accents. But you fooled me. They go, and they're like, what is this? And I go, sir, I think you're joked. And this is how I like to handle hecklers, is yeah. just to really take them down a couple cocks. And I was like, I think your joke didn't work because I didn't give you the line that was necessary. Yes. You waited too long. You wanted to do the joke, but I didn't give you the proper lines. I you liked had to that. bail on it. That's friendly. But you did it anyway. And that, this is a tough crowd. I mean, it, I mean, it was pretty funny, but uh, it didn't do so hot. Yeah. And I think they went over, like, they had, like, Marine doormen who went over and swarmed them. Oh. Uh, but. It was just hilarious that he tried to go ahead with the bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for him. He went for it. But that's comedy, folks. You got to have the setup make sense with the punchline. And he was so gung ho on getting that punchline out that uh, he couldn't. He couldn't call an audible. Yeah, couldn't call the audible. But uh, the show was fun. Audible.com. Nice people, good show. And then I went over to Raleigh and worked with uh, my buddy Mark Brady, who's fantastic. If you're ever in the area, you need a guy. He's Atta fantastic. Brady. Worked with him last time. Handsome guy, just sexy as hell. Do I know this cat? Maybe. I think maybe. He's a tall guy, very handsome. He did. He got a little fame during the pandemic. Mm. He did the basketball shot. Did you see that, Chuck? What? It feels like something. Every day he did a trick shot with a little plastic basketball, his kid's basketball. Oh, fuck. It got on ESPN. Oh, it's quite a thing. you got to watch it. There's a credit. I mean, he was like tossing it out of his window, oh. off the pool, one of these things. It's amazing. I love these guys. I think you sent me one of those. I sent you a bunch. I was like obsessed yes. with it. I think these guys, well, how cool is that? You're obsessed with this guy and you get to work with him. Yeah. But I think these guys who do stuff during the pandemic, I love those guys who got shit done and played the piano or fucked their wife or whatever it was. Good for him. Yeah, sexy guy, funny guy, good comic, great weekends, Mellow Mike. Mellow. And uh, Marcus Brady over there. And uh, just good, fun shows. But let me, can I tell you a tale? I got yeah. one tale. Let me just add, they, they, it's still the old good nights. You didn't do, because I heard they're knocking that bitch down and putting up a, a parking lot. Yeah, they're building a new club, just like Austin. It's not quite ready yet. I don't know what's going on in the, uh, that world. I think the shortage, you get a little baby formula, people are backed up. The baby formula seems quite... Frightening, doesn't what's, it? What's going on there? Is that because of abortions? I think this. Um, I don't think so. I see. But I think there's a shortage of jizz or something mm. because there's no baby for. But it's one of those news stories. I don't have a baby. I don't care. But I, I see it and I'm like, that doesn't seem good. Right. I mean, I don't like. I I try not to push the panic button. Ah, uh, you, you're I'm nervous. A, I'm Mr. Cool Toes. I'm not too nervous. But you're like, you do some of the math. You're like, I'm doing pretty well. But I'm like. These flights are eight hundred bucks. Uh, the inflation bread is seventeen dollars. Uh, gas. I mean, yeah. yeah. Not to not not to step on Mellow Mike's bit, but the gas is out of control. It's uh, <laughs> it's crazy. It's like I went in L. A. It was like eight dollars or something. I'm like, what what is some poor landscaping guy got to do? He's got a van out there. He's got to gel a, or juice up his his uh, van blower mower. I know. 
Join the Patreon, folks. Uh, a lot of good stuff yeah. over there. The price is still the same. Uh, on sign that. up, yeah. Three <laughs> yes. bucks for ours. No inflation there. It's like folks. half the price of a, a gallon of gas. Yeah. But I Putin's mean, like, a member now. they got no baby formula. There's kooks all over the place. Uh, there's bail reform. There's mass shootings. There's it just doesn't seem uh, something's up. Good doesn't seem good here. No, no. You could blame it on Hunter Biden. Who knows? But uh, the government's kooky. AOC's a track. I don't know what's going on, and I think Trump's going to run again. The whole thing scares me. What are we going to do? Should we just pack up, and, and uh, is this why billionaires are going to space? Are they looking for new land? I don't, I'm, I'm moving to London for 11 days. I'm going to feel it out. And Sarah <laughs> really? has citizenship, by the way. What? Her mother's British, so we might... Be drunk. Boo-boo. Go yeah. out there and go hang in the rain. <laughs> hey, well, I got the teeth you, for it. You got to dance, yeah. <laughs> I mean, get in there. Yeah, I know. Maybe I'll move to Mexico and then, you know, get a villa and live it up with a little Swedish boy. I don't know if it's going that bad. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> tippy toe. Okay, Arriba, Arriba. So, uh, just kidding about everything. Don't call me. We love Mexico. Don't Viva. Love. Viva. Las Vegas. Woo! Have Sorry. For that tune. I'm uh, um I'm uh I'm all over the road here. But yeah, yeah. That's uh that's a good weekend. And I love Wilson. Tuesdays with stories is also brought to you by Fanimal. When you're getting out and doing shit this summer, and if you want the best price for the best shows this season, use Fanimal. Fanimal has tickets to everything. You know me. I'm ticket crazy. There are no fees. The price you see is the price you pay. And for any hot ticket like the governor's ball, Lollapalooza, we used to call it Lawn Full of Losers. <laughs> Fanimal is the always the cheapest option. And Fanimal's group purchase makes it easy to get your friends together. Set a size for your group and choose the number of tickets you want to pay for yourself. Then invite friends. When the group size is met, everyone gets charged and receives their ticket. If the minimum size isn't reached in time, nobody gets charged. You don't commit until your friends do. Oh, yeah. And Fanimal has amazing customer service. Don't take my word for it. Check out their hundreds of five-star reviews. The next time you need tickets, go to Fanimal.com and sign up with Tuesdays for $20 off credit toward your first purchase. Nice. Check out Fanimal and experience more. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Babbel. Have you ever wanted to learn a dirty word in every language? Well, I sure do. I'm in England right now. I want to learn how to say the F word in, 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 in English. Oh, shoot. That doesn't make sense. Now, thanks to Babbel, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language no matter what you use it for. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I've always wanted to learn French. I'm watching the French Open. I went to Paris. I didn't know how to say anything other than wee-wee oui, oui and tee Never said ha. Huh. Babbel's 15-minute lessons are great to learn a new language on the go. Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts, not AI like other apps. Choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German. I know a little German. He's right over there. Remember? Great movie. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology can help you improve your pronunciation and accent. Oh, what the fuck? Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash Tuesdays. That's babbel.com slash Tuesdays for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. So I got to go. I'm, I'm in, you know me. I get to a town. I look up all the sports. I got to see some sports. Sure. Who's going on? I go through <laughs> NC State, you know, blah, 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 the fucking... The Tar Heels, this, that, the other thing. I look up NC State baseball. I'll see some college baseball. Well, they're playing Duke. Uh-huh. And Duke is in Durham, not far from Raleigh. Uh-huh. Neighbors. So I say, I'm going to go to the Duke baseball game now we're on cooking. Saturday, 1 p.m. Not bad. That seems like fun. Living the dream. So I get a ticket. It's 10 bucks. What? General admission. Duke baseball stinks. Nobody cares about baseball. Baseball is really dying. It's really hurting. It's on life support. It's sad. I brought my nephew to a game. He's 13. He grew up with TikTok. He's watching it going, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life ever. It's the opposite of TikTok. It's the complete reverse of TikTok. Uh, I tried to do a joke about it. I'm like, you could punish your kid. You could be like, clean up your room or we're taking you to Wrigley Field, you piece of shit. That's great. I love it. <laughs> um, he's like, oh, I don't want to go to Wrigley. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we go, as I said it out loud, I'm like, that's not bad. I told you that was a good bit. We, we texted. Uh, but any jizz. So I get the tickets to the game. Now there's rain in the forecast. Don't you hate 
We're in New York. Hate There's the rain. kooks everywhere. Every day it's 48. It's cloudy. It's rainy. It smells like trash. I'm yes. like, Carolina. I'm going to go to Carolina, the greens and the Ooh, warmth and the south. Rolling hills. All that stuff. Yes, LeBron. I get there. It's just overcast every day. Ah, That's the forecast. Low shit. cloud. I hate the low cloud. I hate a low. Give me a high <laughs> cloud. So I, I, I get there. It's Saturday. Rain in the forecast. I get up, and I try to really... Not bad. Hey, Not bad. Hey, that, Not was, bad. Uh, that was uh, Charles Barkley. <laughs> Sorry. So I... Jesus Christ. I think I paper cuts on two fingers at once. Easy, Fatty. So I will come down on you. I like to get I like to really when you're on the road, you don't bring a feature, you just you gotta get after it. So I gotta meditate, I gotta run, I gotta hit a thing, I gotta do all the stuff. So I get all the shit done and I go, now I'm going to the ball game. Nice. So you I head it. out to Durham and the whole time it's raining. Bull Durham. Exactly. Right down the street. Uh huh. Durham Bulls. Good movie. So I drive out there. It's like an hour. It's raining the whole time. Then I get to the Duke University campus, which it's my fourth time going there. I shot that commercial there years ago. Wow. Way Full back. Circ. That, that U, University of Texas commercial was shot at Duke. Mm. And if you've never been to the Duke campus, put that right on really? the top of your list. You walk around the Duke campus. I just want to grab every kid by the lapels, which I don't know what that means, and say... Do you know how lucky you are I know. to be smart enough I and wealthy know. enough Privileged. and white enough to get into yeah. Duke University or Asian? Or Asian excuse yes. me. I don't know the numbers. Someone's going to write to me and call I, me a piece of I shit. Think it's just a winning. bit. I it's think just a joke. Right. I don't know. But I'm like, <laughs> or, or good at basketball enough. A lot of people, a lot of basketball people there. Relax. Jesus. What? They're good at basketball. Christ. Oh, shit. Leitner. He was white. Leave yeah, it. yeah. Hold Didn't on. Didn't miss a shot. Whitener. <laughs> All right. So we go there. I'm like, I'm just walking around. It's like the the birds. It sounds like they're piping in sounds. All these old bricks. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. You can't believe how beautiful this campus is. It's beautiful. It's so pretty. The quad, the sunny day, the trees, the the young folks. Their their whole lives are ahead of them. The hope. They got their books. They're idiots. I love it. They're they're having sex with each other. It's mayhem. They're all hot. They're all gorgeous. Yes. It's very exciting. So I'm walking around there, and now the sun has come out. Now Aha. it's a sunny day. And I get there a little bit early. I'm always early for everything. So I got about 20 minutes. I had a business call. I take the call, and I'm walking around campus. I remember shooting the commercial here. I remember going to the game there, Cameron Indoor, the bricks, the business. And I'm walking around going, God, I feel so alive. I feel so great right now. Love and I'm campus. glad I came out here. I'm watching the ball game. Then I go over to the stadium. It's general admission. It's under the little roof there. It's a whatever stadium. Sure. I find my seat. General admission. A lot of beautiful women running around. A lot of kids. Now the teams, the game's supposed to start at 1. Aha. Uh -huh. But the whole time they were supposed to be warming up, it was raining. Mm. So now they're moving the game back an hour. But there's no announcements. There's not going, hey, the game's starting at a different time. What the hell? So now everyone's out there in the field. They're taking BP. They're jogging. They're stretching. Sunny day. Blue skies. And I go, why are we playing here? It's been 20 minutes. I'm trying to be patient and zen. I'm sitting there. <laughs> They're playing some music. I'm watching the kids play over here. They're having a good time. That brings me back to my youth. Sure. It's nice. They're playing pickle and everything. It's great. You're about a minute away from getting on TikTok like your nephew. Well, every once in a while, I'll check Instagram, whatever. And then I go for another walk. I go get a hot dog. I yes. get some M&Ms. I get a water. I'm a okay. child. Okay. Yes, yes. Good diet. I come back. I find my seat. I'm sitting there. 45 minutes. 50 minutes pass. Mm. Now... The clouds are coming in. Uh-oh. And there's a whole hour of blue sky. We could be playing baseball. Ah, oh boy. Sky of color. It's overcast. The clouds are getting low. Mm. Finally, they take the little nets and screens off the field. Here and they start. The, one team clears. And uh. then yeah, now it's down. Finally, they take the field. But okay. they take the field with a bunch of children. Like, they're like, welcome kid day, whatever bullshit. Ooh, don't cop a feel on them. It's a bunch of Gary Veters running around, and I go, get the fuck off. It's going to start raining soon. Yes. Now they go, it's time to sing the national anthem. Ah. And this is a Duke alumni, whatever. Mm, good lacrosse team. This is when it felt like I was being punked. Uh -huh. It's getting cloudy. Now it starts to drizzle. Now it's drizzling. So they go, it's okay. time for the national anthem. I go, we got to start this game. Now, by the way, the Boston Bruins are playing a playoff game also in Raleigh, ironically, uh -huh. at 4.30 p.m. Now, you know me. I can't miss the Bruins game, especially yes. it's game seven. So I got to leave by 3.30. I think a one o'clock game. I'll watch two hours of baseball, drive back, 
be back by 3.30. I can have a cigar on my porch, wow. then watch the Bruins. You got a fucking day here, Fatty. Well, now it's 2 o'clock. Oh, boy. And here comes the rain. Here we go, Mary It's Poppins. raining. And they go, here's the national anthem. I swear to God. It's going to sound, I wish I had it on film. It's going to sound like I'm kidding. This is how she sings the national anthem. I, sw- I felt like they got together and they're like, let's fuck with Joe List today. Okay, hit me. This is the national anthem. Oh. <laughs> I swear oh, to God, God. I thought somebody hit pause. Ah, it's like when you hit a podcast and you, you push it, slow-mo it. It was bananas. Whoa. I don't even want to do it because it's too long. Oh, yeah, Seven I'm seconds passed. Can you... See? Oh. Like that. And I would do the whole song, but you, people at home would be like this. Okay, we get it. Yes. It was insane. Wow. Insane. It was like a, it was like Inagata Devita. It was like a six and a half minute yeah. stairway to heaven. Stairway to heaven. heaven. <laughs> By the time she's done, at one point she did free he he like that. <laughs> and a bunch of people looked at each other. Like a bunch of dudes all went like, What? Can you yeah. believe this? She finishes up. Thank you. Everyone claps, puts their hats Jesus. back on. Our kids it's, are going to graduate. She goes, thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. She walks off. It's pouring ah, rain. Well, it's pouring. At least we got that in. One hour has passed. So now they go, play ball. And I'm scre- now I'm like pissed. I don't even care. I'm just screaming, play ball. It's just coming on the Can field. play ball? Yeah, I'm coming on the lady's head. Sure. Well, <laughs> it probably was faster than the singing. So now it's 2 o'clock. I got one hour left before I got to leave. Here comes the first pitch of the game. It goes whoop and just shoots like into the net at like 40 feet away because it's pouring rain. Of course, all slick. The guy throws one pitch. The ball literally shoots off that way. And the umpire goes, that's it. Come on off the field. I swear to God, we (laughs) sat there. We watched them warm up and get limber and play fucking pinochle for an hour with the sun. Came in for the rain. One pitch. This one pitch. This is why the sport is done. It's, it's dying. Dead. We could have wrapped it up by now. This field's wetter than my ass. <laughs> it's insane. So they leave. So then we sit, and I just sit there for one more full hour while it rains, listening to fucking breakfast at Tiffany's. I said, I think. Oh yeah. Now the one saving factor was the kids. They don't give a shit. So they're just playing, and they're, like, diving down the thing and having a great time. So I'm just watching children like a creep. Sure. And I'm like, oh, that looks like fun. Look at them having fun. It brings me back to the old days, whatever. I'm looking at Instagram. I'm watching Pornhub. The game finally starts at 3 p.m. I watch one and a half innings of baseball. Wow. One and a half innings, I go, all right, I got to head back. Look at that. And then I go back. I stop to bite. I missed the beginning of the hockey game. That's how long the Ah, delay was. I bet they started on time. They started on time. The Bruins lost. It was devastating. But, man, the worst, longest national anthem, rain delay. It fucked up my whole day, but the shows were great. Do they they do the singing with with the hockey? They sing, yeah. They do a Oh Say Can You? Oh, yeah. And they All do right. an Oh Canada, too, if there's a Canadian team. Nah. Which is a better song, I think. Oh Canada. Is that it? Ooh, patriot love. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, I may be moving there soon. Well, here's what's kooky. You bring up Boston team. You bring up baseball. I forgot to say, we're hanging out in Dallas, and we, uh, we go, hey, you know, we got a Sunday show, and there's a Rangers... Uh, Red Sox game. Oh, yes, yesterday. Yes, yeah, so oh, we, yeah. we went to that puppy. Oh, no kidding. You now, saw the Sox. We saw the Sox lose. 7-1. to one. Pretty hard, yeah. It was yeah. a tough one. But uh, my buddy Andrew, he's got a Tesla. Oh, wow. Now, Teslas Young are blood. fun. Yeah, he got a bunch of money in crypto, and I think he stole some money from somebody. But uh, he got a bunch of money, and he bought a Tesla, and he goes, you want to drive it? I go, do I want to drive it? So uh, I get a couple beers in me. We get behind that thing. You ever driven one? Woo! It's a whole other world, Fatty. I, I don't mean, get asked. What is this? Huh? I don't get asked. I figured you haven't. I'm your co-host. <laughs> Who gives a shit about him? <laughs> he doesn't think uh, you. What do they care? <laughs> I'm driven in one. I've been in one. Have you been in one? Uh, no. I'm oh. in the passenger. Who cares if Chuck drove a Tesla? <laughs> He's been in a little boy. But He's uh, just the boss. The goddamn watch. Get rid of the watch. The Tesla watch. Nobody wants the watch. Shit. Nobody likes the watch. All get a right. watch. I like to watch. Uh, that watch stinks. But uh, okay, so we get behind the wheel of that Tesla. I I've mean, been in one. <laughs> with a celebrity. You ever driven? 
I didn't let me drive. I didn't think so. Case well, you closed. thought he was in one? He well, drives a Ford Focus, this piece of shit. Well, he knows Kevin Smith. He's eating out Birbiglia. I yeah, figured yeah. he bought one by now. I think he... the Kevin Smith thing's made up, frankly. All right, well, he's got a cyber truck, apparently. I don't know what's going on. I'm all itchy over here. Yeah, well, uh, that'll get you. So, uh, what's up with itching powder? You ever hear about itching powder? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I never who has itching powder? Oh, yeah, I've thrown itching powder on Have people. you? Oh, yeah, I've played what? a lot of well, itching powder. I've driven a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's not what I heard. But all right, so... I'm in the Tesla and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hung over. Woo! There's no gears on that fucker. It just, rawr, it just goes. It's electric. No gears. You gotta have gears. No gear. How can there be no gear? No gear. It's Richard like, gear. It's like going camping, you know, without it's no gear. There's no shifting. So it's not shifting by itself. No shift. How does that work? Key. What's in there? How does Is it, it automatic? Is that what you mean? Well, no, no. Uh, most cars well, are automatic. automatic. Shifts. Yeah, yeah. But this thing has no like first gear. You know how you feel oh, a car really? like rev up to different gears? <laughs> this just goes. It's unreal. That's weird. Interesting. So what is the mechanism? Yeah, yeah. Don't blame the mechanism. I think it's electricity. I don't know. It's like how does a uh, how does a toaster work? It's just electric. Wow. Toasters are. <laughs> That's <laughs> like saying though, there's no ejection in the te- the. Uh oh, I think someone just yelled at us. I heard someone yell. I heard something. Was it directed at but us? But a better a better analogy is if you said there's a toaster, it doesn't eject, and then you're like, well, how does it get out? You see what I mean? I there's no ejector in the Tesla. <laughs> ejector seat. Hold but on. Do you see my analogy? But no, it's like a light. You turn the light on, the room lights up. There's no. I light. know, but how? Whoa, we're lighting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just goes. We need an engineer. Let's get an engineer yes. in here. Somebody probably has one in this in this fucking building. Oh, they sure. Hate us. No, um, there's no engineers in here. This is lawyers and doctors and shit. All right, well, I bet they represent an engineer. So there's no gears. No gears. Are there brakes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of brake. Uh, I need a brake. Give me a brake. But, uh, I mean, I get behind that thing. Now, here's the clinker with the Tesla. This is why Musk is fun. First of all, it's got this big screen on the front. You can watch Netflix. You can watch Pornhub. You can watch yeah. uh, YouPorn, all of them, OnlyFans. And I'm beep, boop, boop, boop. And then he goes, why don't you put on the self-driving? I go, all right, let's do it. He goes, click, 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 clicks a little thingamajiggy. Now it's driving the bus. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. I got my feet up. I'm, I'm, I'm TikToking. I'm calling people. I'm, doing, I'm writing bits. I'm cooking breakfast. It, it stays in the lanes. It stays two car lengths behind. A lane Venice. Yes, it, it goes. Lowest lane. And it goes in. It, it breaks for you. It, you. You put in where you want to go. Rangers game. And it just goes there. What? It knows the exits. It was unreal. That's not fun. It wasn't fun, especially because I own a 1973 Beamer. So I'm, you know, I'm shifting. I'm gears all day. I got a clutch on the, ball, on the floor here. I'm, I'm working this. I'm working that. It's a crank uh, window. So this is a whole different world. Fatty. Interesting. Yeah, it was pretty lunch. I mean, I could see how you get lost in that thing. You just sit in it and you're like, all right, I'll do my taxes. I'll do the uh, New York Times and uh, I'll do my wife. Do you like the screen? The screen seems distracting. It is, but you have so much free time. You yeah, might as well do the oh, jumble. Because yeah. you don't have to look. Yeah, no. right. Now, can you override the system? What if an old lady jumps? Can I step on the brake? You break? can, yes, but it'll, it'll stop for her. Wow. But this is how kooky Elon Musk is. There's so many options. There's a, there's a whoopee cushion option. So you go what back seat, whoopee cushion. So that it goes, and, they, and you go, Jesus, Billy, what are you doing back there? Wow, it's a real dad car. I gotta get this car. It's a dad car. He's a kook. He's a he's an African American. He's a millionaire. He's having fun. Millionaire. Billion. <laughs> Multi, multi billion. All right. Well, I'll believe it when he buys Twitter. But he has another thing where you push a button and a, a strobe light goes off and it plays techno music like you're in a nightclub and there's lights flashing everywhere. I mean, it's wild. Yeah, this is cuckoo. It's a cuckoo car, and that's just some of the options. We eventually got to the Rangers game. Now we get there and we go, let's scalp. We should scalp. I love scalping. I like scalping too. But Ooh. now with StubHub, it's a little, you know. Well, that's the easier. other thing. So we try to scalp. Nobody's out there. One guy was like, I gave up. It's too hot out. So he stopped scalping. But we go up to the door and we go, "Hey, we don't have tickets." And they go, "Cheapest thing I got's about 40." And we go, "Well, where where are they?" And he goes, "Oh, it's way up there in Wuhan. You never see a thing. It's another ozone over there." I was like, "All right, fuck that." And then my friend goes, "Well, what are we doing? Why aren't we going StubHub? StubHub Dugout Club, mm. which is just 
club is enticing. Yes, of course. So we go, how much? It's twenty dollars. So I go, all right, let's do it. Twenty bucks for dugout club. It's crazy. It's I, crazy. I, I, in Boston and New York, it costs a thousand dollars to get the worst seat in the house. I know. You go to Kansas City, Arlington, whatever. You can fifty bucks. You can pitch. Right, right. I'm more of a catcher. But the, you, you could, got that right. You could get the game, and it was this is a packed out game. There's nothing to do in Arlington, Texas, and the Sox are playing. This is a pro ball game, and we go to the dugout club. We grab some beers. We're on the field. I mean, I, I'm cutting the grass here. It's wow. wild. Wow. And uh, boy, three home runs in a row. Just in a row. Well, two in a row, and then one like a, uh, a, a minute later. Yeah, well, the Red Sox are not very good. Not great. Bad squad. Yeah, the, the Rangers had a couple of Cubans out there and some DR fuckers who were really bringing the, the bacon home. Mm, frying it in the pan. Yes, so uh, the, uh, the the fireworks go off. They shoot oh, fireworks right, when they the do a home run. It's, yeah, it's that bubblegum horse shit. Very exciting, but don't you love a pro game? I know you went to 13 when you were in Beantown, but... sure. There's kids out there. They're with, they're on their grandpa's lap, and they got the glove, you know, and they got yes. the little hat on. I, it's such Americana. It's very fun. It's and it's dying, Jerry. Oh, it's dying. It's Betty White out there. It's Bob Saget. It's Norm. It's Gilbert. It's Louis Anderson. Wow, tough year. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of funny guys too. We can't get uh, you. Know, yeah, I know yeah, what you mean. You know, okay. Check the lineup. Yeah, yeah. If they in the cellar. So, uh, and you know, they do the thing where they go, we're going to bring out Bob Johnson. He fought the, the Nips in the Iraq war, or whatever the hell. And he goes, and he's old and his grandma's there. And yeah. you know, his wife looks like his grandma. And are you allowed to have an event without a veteran coming out? Is it no, legal? Can you do no. it? I went to an orgy once. They wheeled out <laughs> uh, Bush it? senior. Can you do anything without saying, Hey, this guy. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you for your service. Yeah, appreciate it. And if you, God forbid you don't stand up to in that. Oh! You gotta stand up. I saw Stephen Hawking on his feet out there. It was wild, but it, I, I've, I've gotten older because I used to be like, all right, enough with the pageantry. Let's get to the game. Where's my beer? Who's, who's going to blow me? And now I'm like, all right, look at these guys fighting for the country. What a loser. <laughs> and I'm standing up. I'm doing this shit. I took my hat off, you know. So I'm into it now. I like a pageantry. It's yes. just a, it's just every, you know, it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. Every game. You go, to, you, know, you go to a few games in a row. Oh, we got Sally's here. She cooked a meal a couple days ago for a homeless kid. Right, Let's right. Let's give it up for her. Here's her T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, she's All got right, a C-section. that's great. That's yes, great. Yes. It's not that I'm, I'm not anti-veteran. I'm just anti can we just sit in silence during the game? Uh, yeah. They go, okay, time to guess the attendance. Right. Now it's time to play the hula hoops. Now it's time for the fucking mascots to race. Yes, Here yes. comes Shelly Berman's in the crowd. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going to, oh, like, we're doing a halftime. Now the kids have to race and in a potato sack. And then you I'm give like, them a piece of candy. This and... is one of the problems with the nation, I think. It's like, I sound like Cosby. <laughs> with the nation. Sleeper cell. My wife, Anna, <laughs> Ticket money. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what we could do? Let's. Ju- I thought this was the rain delay concerts. Everywhere I go, we could just sit. Let's nah, just sit you here. Can't. You, can't you don't anymore. need to have fucking bubblegum pop hits. You don't need Christina Aguilera. Just. I'm not saying every time. Have some of that. Just once every couple innings, during the, between innings. Everyone just sits and chats. I think we'd make it through. I think we would be okay. Oh, it would it, it would be a hump to get over, and then we'd all be better off. I think everyone would be relieved. I think often that music, if you just cut it, everyone would be like this. Oh, nice. I completely agree. I mean, just, how many times do we need We Will Rock You and all this shit to play? I would like to get on that Jumbotron. I'm not going to lie to you. One time, a fun story, Boston Bruins 1998 playoffs, the Jumbotron was just my torso. Because ah. I had Let's Get Rowdy Boston, and it started there and like panned out. So the the, the whole jumbotron was my fifteen year old body. Hey. There was guys coming all over the place. <laughs> I love a fifteen year old body. <laughs> it was great. All right, well, I think we got to wrap we this gotta up. We got to wrap. I got to go. I'm like, you got to go to London town. I got to go to London. Mary oh, Poppins. Hello, hello, London. All right, well, you're going to be in London, so go see the guy. The show sold That's out. That's already passed. Oh, shit. All right, well, you missed out in London. But here's where I need you to come. There you go. San on Francisco, my face. San Francisco Punchline, June 9th through the 11th, 9-11. Do not forget, I, I just bought a plane ticket for $1,600. Holy kite. I got to hit the fucking... <laughs> So, holy cock. Cut that. Hit. We got a couple things we got to yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah. 
we got a, I got to hit some bonuses here. So come on out from San Francisco, Napa Valley, uh, fucking Hidden Valley, in the Valley of the Dolls, wherever the fuck. Valley Girl. Any, any Valley High. Yes. Valley High, Screech Powers. <laughs> He's dead. Come out to the show. Punchline. Stolen, stolen Valley. San Francisco. <laughs> Dustin Diamondback. Arizona. Yeah. Come. And then Vancouver Rickshaw Theater the night after that, uh, the 12th. And uh, and then I got I got Baltimore Magoobies after that. And then I got Atlanta Punchline June 24th, 25th. The special's up right now. Comedian Joe List has all my dates. For the love of tits, come. Yeah. San Francisco. You're probably a, a million by now. When this comes out, I don't know about that. Easy, hey, big fella. Gotta be optimistic. So, uh, yeah, I'm all over the road. Uh, Houston, San Antonio, as I mentioned. Uh, shit, my uh, Orlando. Go to marknormancomedy.com. We got fun dates. Thanks for everything. Get on the Patreon. Chuck's kicked it up a notch. Yeah. We got mugs. We got shirts. We got queefs. We love you. Thanks again. Praise Allah. Sorry to the Samoans. And, uh, Oh, say...